Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here. I am joined by my lovely girlfriend, Maya. And, uh, yeah, it's Saturday, so we're going to review another double feature. And kind of an odd one for you guys this week. We got Blade 2 and Paper House. So, there we go. Let's get right into this. Uh, up first, we got Blade 2. Uh, going back to 90... No, sorry. 2001, I believe. 2002. It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, basically, uh, yeah. Blade's still hunting down the vampires, but now there's like a super vampire who is stalking vampires. They're called the Reapers. And now Blade must team up with the vampires to take out the Reapers. Uh, so we'll you go first on this one. What do you think of Blade 2? Give us your review. Long. Long. Yeah. Boring long? Yeah. Want to add anything to that? or? They shouldn't make any more movies of Blade. Alrighty. Thank you, sweetie. Insightful as always, my girlfriend Maya. Alright, so I've never seen a single Blade movie. It just did not appeal to me. I'm not big on fucking action horror movies for the most part. Like Resident Evil, I let slide because I, I love the video games. And I love zombies, so man, it just kind of it helps. Uh, but Blade just seems like the generic, stereotypical, <sighs> the movie where everybody's, like, you know, has the Matrix fucking look, like everybody's got their leather trench coats and shades and we're doing fucking weird run up the wall kung fu with bad techno music playing in the background, we got these crazy, ridiculous, innovative weapons that make no sense, but fuck it, we're in this world where nothing makes sense anyways. I don't like those movies, alright? Like, I just don't get into them. Underworld's just like that. I don't fucking like Underworld. Wasn't big on it. Um, Van Helsing, to a certain extent, was like that. I didn't care for it. Um, I didn't watch the first Hellboy for the same reason. I, just, uh, I still haven't seen Hellboy because I just feel like it's the same bullshit. So, I don't know. I, it's just not my kind of movie. But... Once again, on this show, I try to, you know, I, I don't just stay within my comfort zone. I like to branch out. I like to see things I've never seen before. I take a lot of uh, viewer requests. And uh, anyways, it, I came across this one. And uh, so out of the three Blade movies, you got Blade, Blade 2, and Blade Trinity. Uh, I was like, well, which one do I want to watch? And I was like, well, clearly the one that's directed by Guillermo del Toro. Because I'm a big Guillermo del Toro fan. Uh, you know, The Orphanage and... Uh, Oh, sorry, he, he, he just produced that one. Uh, Dell's Backbone, Pan's Labyrinth, uh, and, uh, of course, he did Hellboy 2. I like Hellboy 2. Uh, even though I don't have the desire to see the first one, I know he directed that one, too, but that one looks like... Uh, so, so anyway, I was like, yeah, was like, all these three, I'll check out Blade 2. So I was like, I'm sure the plot won't be that complex that I'll be lost, and I, and I wasn't. So, basically, in this one, in the very beginning, because uh, it's Wesley Snipes' Blade, and, of course, his buddy is uh, Chris Christopherson, uh, I know I'm butchering that name, fuck it, uh, as like the old dude who's like his buddy or whatever, his partner. So apparently he was turned into a vampire at the end of part one, so he goes and rescues him and just like cures him. Just hands out cure. It, it, yeah, cured. Boom. You're cured. Really? Retarded. Right there. I'm already fucking against this because it, it, it's that easy to cure him. Why don't they just like get like a fire hose full of this cure and just fucking hose them all down. Boom. No more vampires. Fucking series is over. Uh, but anyways, so they're teamed up, and he's joined by uh, Norman Reedus, uh, which, I'm not going to lie, a high point in this movie. I, I like Norman Reedus. Uh, now, I'm more of a Boondock Saints fan than a Walking Dead fan, uh, and I haven't really been through The Walking Dead a lot. I've only seen the first season. Uh, but I'm still a big fan of Norman Reedus. Like, I, I just love the Boondock Saints. Like, I'm not going to lie. So, cool seeing him in here. I, I didn't really care for the character at first. He was just like this dumb little stoner dude, but I was like, ah, yeah, fuck it. Um... So, yeah, so, you know, it's those guys. Well, then you find out that you do have these super vampires. Uh, it just reminds me, like, as I'm watching it, because I know it came out way before this, but there's an episode of Family Guy where Peter goes, I have an idea for a movie called Bigger Jaws. And basically, the humans had to team up with Jaws to fight Bigger Jaws. And it's just the most ridiculous thing you think of. That's this movie right here, like, well, what's worse than vampires? Super vampires that eat on vampires. It, I don't know. It was just one of those things where I'm just like, I don't care, but whatever. I'm here. I'm watching. Let's just go for it. And, uh, of course, now they have to team up. Like, he teams up with, like, the clan of vampires that's been hunting him. 
and he's been hunting in. I mean, they, I guess it's just been a war, uh, kind of a lopsided war, but Blake kills them all anyways. But anyway, so he, he's they team up, they put their differences aside to take on um, these Reapers. And um, has Ron Perlman, he's uh, one of the vampires that's teamed up with him and everything. So, I don't know, as I'm watching it, I it's, it's so fucked up because it's like, it is like the most action packed fucking movie. Like, there's just like a fight scene every like three minutes. It's just fucking insanity. Fucking chase scenes and fight scenes and oh, there's motorcycle crashes and there's fucking people falling from the sky and there's machine guns and these fucking sword fighting shit. And it's just like, who gives a shit? Like, I am so fucking bored. As like, literally three minutes in, I'm just like, oh, who gives a shit? Are we still doing this? And ah. Uh, I just couldn't get into it. There was just a lot of things. Uh, spoiler alert, because this has been out for a while. Um, there's supposed to be like all these crazy twists and turns that I feel like they just kind of threw in there. Like I, the first one, you, a you know it's going to happen anyways, but it's like the vampires turn on Blade. You know they're teamed up to take on the thing. And okay, I'm like okay, I'm not going to fault it for that one. All right, like okay, granted it wasn't that big of a shock, but at the same time I'm like eh. But then it's just like they keep doing it like that. So then it's like, well, the Reapers are actually not bad at all. They're, you know, it, they're actually, they were created by the vampires. So you're like, oh, no, shock. And, oh, Norman Reedus, he's actually a part of the vampire crew as well. He screwed over Blade. Oh, no, shock. And, oh, no, wait, Blade's fighting them all, and he's taking them all down. Oh, no, oh, who cares? Yeah, so it was just a lot of that. Like, it's just like they kept trying to cram all these twists that you don't care about. They're trying to build up, and then the whole time, like, they're trying to show, like, this kind of, pseudo love angle between Blade and like the chick that's a vampire and you can tell they're pushing for it but they're not developing it like it literally just like I don't know it was have a couple scenes where it's like they share a little moment and at the end when she's dying in his arm it's supposed to mean something and it doesn't mean shit like the whole time you're just like dude really uh, and then it's like Blade has no it's like he just has one track mind fucking kill anything that's not human even though he's half vampire himself that's his goal is just to kill vampires in general. Like, no, fuck them. I don't care if they're good or bad. I'm going to kill them all. And then at the end, like, the Reapers, like, yeah, sure, they were, you know, feeding off vampires. And the point that the vampires think is, like, well, when, when they run out of vampires, who think they're going to go after next? Which, okay, fine. I, I get that. But it seems like after you find out, like, the vampires were very evil and they created these Reapers and then are torturing them and trying to, you know, kill them as well, it's like you think, like, Blade just be like, all right. Turned up this asshole, played us both. Hey, good day. I'll catch you later. No. He's like, I'm going to kill this fucking asshole too. No, it's just like, really? I don't know. I just, ah, uh, I'm focusing on the bad. Let's focus on the good for a second, shall we? Uh, performances aren't bad. I, I dug, uh, like I said, Ron Perlman, I'm a, I'm a Ron Perlman fan. Uh, Wesley Snipes does okay. I mean, I'm not big on Wesley Snipes, but, you know. In fact, there's only one Wesley Snipes movie I like. That's Major League. Like, I just don't really care for that guy in general. But anyways, no, I mean, everybody does good in this. Uh, the direction wasn't bad. Uh, there were a lot of little... When I mean, you watch a Guillermo del Toro film, they're just, you can just tell right off the bat. It's, and this one, I mean, you really couldn't, but there were certain signs, like little flashes of del Toroisms. If that's even a... I don't know if I just made that up or if that's an actual thing. But anyways, I, you know, there's just certain set designs... Was just screaming Del Toro. Uh, certain camera movements. He, I get, there's one thing he does a lot, and I didn't see it in this one. I kept looking for. It. This is like the one thing I was looking for. Is he'll do a thing where like he'll have like a pillar or a tree or something that comes in the frame, and like the camera just. But then when it cuts behind it, it'll either dissolve into another sh a shot or whatever. He does that like all the time. I know like Pan's Labyrinth. He was doing it like a bastard. Uh, Del's backbone. He does it a few times. So I kept waiting for that shot. It never happened. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, overall, I mean, I did like the design of the Reapers. I love the fact that their mouth, or the bottom part of their mouth opened up. And initially, I mean, I don't know how much of it was, uh, digital effects or whatever, but there's a well, scene where... spoilers, don't you think? Well, this is 2002. I'm, I'll, I'll drop spoiler hardcore. I, I give them a 10-year buffer. That's my rule. Like, anything 10 years and older, I'll spoil the shit out of it. Now, anything that's... Within 10 years, I don't because you know, there's still shit I haven't seen that, you know, has came out recently. So, uh, But there's a scene where they're doing kind of like an autopsy on these fucking Reapers. And, of course, I mean, clearly practical effect. And it looks really cool. I really dug just the 
the anatomy of these things. I, mean, I just thought they looked awesome, you know. So, I mean, I'm not trying to say this movie is the biggest piece of shit. I mean, it did have some qualities. Like I said, Norman Reedus, I really liked his character. Uh, initially, I just thought he was going to be stupid. Like, I was like, oh, like, I like the actor, but this character looks like it's dumb. But you kind of grow to like the character. And then, like I said, just the whole, like, he screws him over just kind of comes out of nowhere. And I don't know. Just kind of like, eh, really? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, and, of course, they had bad techno music, like, the entire... That and uh, the soundtrack, I swear I heard, like, three Cypress Hill songs. And then I look at the credits, and there's only one... So it's like they must have just played that song like three or four times throughout the fucking movie, and I'm just like, really? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I have no desire to check out the other Blade movies. Uh, everybody's probably gonna be like, well, Phantom, you watched it out of sequence. You can't do that. You gotta have the build up of part one. I don't need the fucking build up. One looked horrible for me you know, before I even before I even did this show. I was like, these look like shitty movies, and I have no desire to watch them. But. I watched part two, didn't care for it. Uh, if, if I am to watch another one, I would watch Blade Trinity because I'm a wrestling fan, just to see Triple H. And I think I've seen enough of the clips to kind of be like, all right, I got enough. I got, I got a gist of it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I know Blade has a lot of fans. I mean, shit, it has like three movies. I think they did a TV movie and a TV series on top of that. Or they did a bunch of straight-to-video shit. I don't know. They, they, it has a, a, a core audience there. Uh, me personally, I just don't care. And it's another thing, he seems like Blade's unstoppable. Like, never once did I feel like he was in any danger at all. Like, you're just like, no matter what he goes up against, like, hey, you got, fucking got him. You fucking got this guy. And then he falls into blood. He turns into, like, Tony Montana. Like, when Tony Montana gets coked up, that was Blade in the blood. He just, like, he comes out. I'm like, I'm going to kill everybody. And he does. Um, so, I don't know. I, I, personally, for me, this wasn't my thing. But once again... I went into this with a little bit of prejudice, and I was right. I just I'm not big on the action horror hybrids, uh, with except with the exception of Resident Evil, not my thing. So, uh, down. boom. Up next, we got Paper House. Uh, odd, an odd little movie about this uh, little girl who um, it's a British film where she basically she starts drawing. And this little tablet of hers, she draws this house, but then when she falls asleep. She visits this house, like in the dream world, if you will. And she realizes that anything she draws in this tablet appears in this dream world. Um, you want to take, take this, or you want me to jump in there first? Um, okay. Um, I like that she's like, like sick or something. Mm -hmm. And she draws the paper house and that boy and everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I the story. Oh, okay. Like it? Yeah. Like it? Okay. Far out. Uh, we actually got this on YouTube, actually. Uh, they have it. It's all, it's broken. They, they have like a, in a playlist form, so it's like broken up in nine parts, but it's all intact and everything. Uh, yeah, never never seen it before. Uh, Ramley kind of came across it, but I was like, I'll check it out. Uh, I will say it's not really a horror movie. Like, IMDb kind of had it. Like, they had the horror, you know, genre on there. It's not. It's definitely, it's dark fantasy. I'll, I will say that. Um... I really love the premise of this movie, like, because, turn off, I mean, because I didn't know anything about this movie, like, I, I was really, this is a blind watch, I was like, oh, Paper House, let's check it out, and, because she even asked me, I mean, what's it about, like, I have no idea, let's just check it out and watch, I didn't even read the summary, because it's like, all right, it's horror, I it's think different. you're supposed to read the summary, so I you don't. know what it's about, I, I like to jump in just head first sometimes, so, we, we pop it in, or we, we pop it in, we, we turn it on, we watch it, and, like I said, it starts off kind of slow, um, but once you kind of get the gist of it, like once she gets to the point where she is, you know, when she draws the house, and then when she goes to sleep, because she, she, she also has these, uh, she's, like she said, she's sick, she has these uh, fainting spells. But anytime she's asleep or she faints, she goes into this dream world. And once she, once she kind of established the rules that, like, if anything she draws goes there, uh, I dug that. Uh, like, she draws uh, this house, but of course there's no one in the house. Like, she's knocking on doors, she can't get in, it's locked or whatever. So then, she draws a boy who's sad. But then once she draws it in there, she can't erase it. Like Because she, she draws it sad first. She's like, well, this is too sad. She tries to you know, erase the frowny face. Can't do it. So whenever she goes back, sure enough, there's a boy in there who is kind of got like a poor... I wouldn't say he's sad, but he has a poor disposition on things. Uh, but the thing is, like, when she's like, come and get me, he's like, well, there's no stairs. Like, I can't, I can't go and come down there because there's just no stairs down there. So then she has to, like, you know, she goes to check out, she has to redraw it again. Or not really redraw, but add to it. Add stairs. She adds stairs. She, like, does the layout of the inside of the house. 
But then, then when Eric goes back there, he's like, well, I can't go down there. I have no legs. Like, my legs don't work. Because when she draws the picture, she just drew the boy in the window. She didn't draw legs or anything. She just drew him from here up. So, and of course, in the movie, he has legs. They just don't work. So, I thought that was kind of neat. It was just kind of an interesting little take on things. Uh, it did have one unexpected, I won't, I won't say jump scare because did, I didn't jump, but an unexpected jolt, if you will. There's a scene, because what happens is this uh, this little girl, she's at home with uh, her mom. But her dad, was he in the army or what was his deal? I don't know. I don't remember. That wasn't the army because that was Tolly. We watched Tolly last night, sorry. He's away. I, I, he's on business or something like that. But anyway, he's away. Um, and there's a lot of these, like, you know, she misses her dad, clearly, or anything like that. Well, she draws her dad in the thing, and then he looks fucking crazy. Like, she, and she's like, oh, he looks mad. So she just scratches him out or whatever. But there's a scene where she had a picture. She took a picture of him a long time ago. Where in her dream, she's on the beach, and her dad's there. And, she, you know, they're just talking, but then he just fucking lunges at her. And I'm not going to lie, unexpected. Nice little jolt scare right there. I'm not going to lie. I was just like, oh, shit, there, there it is. Um, I dug that. What happens is, uh, when she goes into that dream world, though, because what happens, she eventually crumbles the paper up and throws it away. Like, she's just tired of it. She's, you know, just doesn't want that, the responsibility to, I don't know, she's just done with it. Uh, but then she realizes that there is a boy who is in the same name and everything, who, uh, he's sick. And I don't know how she makes this connection, but she just knows that, like, this boy that she drew, that she kind of created this in an alternate world, he has a life in the real world, and it's the same boy. So she frankly gets the paper back, and, of course, it's, it's a whole scene where it's, you know, about to be thrown away in the, in the you know, trash man about to throw it out. When she uncrumples it, and she goes back to sleep, now the, the the house she built is almost fucking dilapidated. Like, it's just destroyed. And the walls, which are s smooth, are now crumpled up as well. Like, it's just... It, and I really like that. Uh, but now, she did, you know, draw her dad, even though she scratched him out. And now her dad, who is, you know, super pissed off and angry, um, is now stalking them in the dream world. And, of course, since she scratched out his face... It's the eyes. Like, he has no eyes in this world. So he's blind, and he you know, he has his hammer, and he's coming after. Uh, really cool movie. Uh, however, for me personally, I felt that there's a... There, toward the end, she gets rid of the, you know... She gets rid of the dad in the fantasy world. Like, her her real dad comes home, and he's fine. I mean, he's not, he's not a dick or anything like that. <sighs> She gets, she expels the bad guy from the fantasy world, the paper house, I guess, if you will. And it just seemed from there on, it, it, it just had nowhere to go almost. And it just seemed like, for me, the, just the interest in the movie itself just kind of, it waned out. Like, I don't know, I was just kind of like, mm, when is this movie over now? Like, I, it just seemed like it kept my attention until the end. Um, it did have, I mean... You know, fuck it, it's a spoiler alert, I guess. I'll, I'll go ahead and drop the ending here. Uh, how the movie comes to an end is they end up going to this, uh, in her dream world, like, it's a mix of this house she drew, but then it's also from that picture that she took on the beach with her dad. They're just kind of together. And when she in, in, inside this dream world, there was a lighthouse. Well, that lighthouse really exists. So, in real life... And in the dream world, the boy still sort of lives there, sort of. In real life, unfortunately, the, the little boy dies. She's never met him in the real life, though. Like, that's just, that was just one of those things. So, when she gets to this lighthouse in the real world, she, you know, knows he's there. Well, sure enough, whenever he or she goes there to visit him, uh, she finds the note that he wrote in the dream world. And, of course, he got a helicopter, dream logic, and uh, he's going away. Well, the ending, and I kind of seen, I, you kind of see sort of where it's going. I mean, it, it definitely didn't go the way I was wanting it to go, but in the end, he comes back for her on this helicopter. And of course, she's reaching for her, and then she's on the edge of the cliff. And you just get the sense that if she would have fell in, in the real world and died, she probably would have grabbed onto that ladder and then flew away with him. Uh, of course, she gets, her mother saves her and everything like that. 
Uh, and then of course when you know, when she saves her, then of course the helicopter you know flies away. So I it had a it definitely had like this fairy tale feel to it, and um, it treated everything more on an adult level, and I liked that. It wasn't pandering to kids. Like I'm not sure what the rating is for this movie, but it didn't feel like it was a complete kids movie. Like it felt like, like I said, it was almost like like Pan's Labyrinth in the way where you know it was a, a adult fairy tale, if you will. Uh, so yeah, I, overall, man, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I liked it. I will say the ending kind of it slows down at the end. Like I mean, it had a, a slow start, you know, for like the first ten minutes or so. But then when it gets into it, it's good. But then the ending it just kind of stops, and it you know there's still some more runtime there. Uh, overall, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna, it's, it's an odd little film I've never heard of, uh, but I, I really I dug it. Uh, I, I would say check it out if you're looking for something new. If you're a fan, you know, fantasy type movies, definitely worth a watch. Uh, Blade 2, I'm sure you guys have probably already seen it. If you haven't, and you're thinking, maybe I should get into the Blade series, I'm going to say don't. Just don't. So there we go. Blade 2. Yeah. Taper House. Yeah. yeah. A little higher. I'll give it a little higher. I'll give it a little halfway up there thing. So, so you got anything else to add to this double feature? No? Nothing? All right. Well, for my lovely girlfriend, Maya, I am the movie Phantom, and uh, yeah, we're out of here. Until next time.